over here in what is a familiar underbonnet really in many respects. Playing the power train is, is different from if you like from the head deck upwards. And there's a new combustion system, there's plenty of new different bowling in the pistons, the piston pack is different by virtue of it. It's sealing hydrogen uh, combustion. Uh, but the sealing head design, the air preparation, you know, the turbocharging system, they're all you know re-specified to that to manage the combustion requirement. But it's a charge cooled engine. This is the charge cooler, the, the, the intercooling tube. And, and you know many if not all these components of debt familiar territory and, and you know all you know that certainly the service items exactly what service technicians across the world would recognize and, yeah. and feel comfortable with and feel safe with with the fuel injection one on modern diesel engines mm -hmm. we now have multiple events for one combustion is that how this works, or do you give it as a yeah, well done, shot? Richard. I, I, I can't really say, okay. but yeah. let's say there's, 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 there's a particular shall we just yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. I mean, that's proprietary stuff, really. Yeah. But you know, the combustion system is, is uh, let's say, it's sophisticated and tuned to hydrogen. Yeah. Okay. But are there any um, elements in the design that are related specifically to the safety of hydrogen as a fuel? Oh, yeah, I mean, no, but well, 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 can you? You know, in, in terms of the way that the fuel is handled on, on the machine, so that we're really comfortable with it. Really. But what sort of measures do you have to employ to? to well, the plane and ceiling, but the, the, just the standards around the steel that's used throughout uh, the joint in the adapters, everything that's appropriate, and, you know, the detection, you know, safety detection beyond that. Yeah, because plainly, you know, it's safety of the machine. You know. Just all that dips to go for. Ryan, Ryan talks is going to be perfectly clean, so we don't have one person going to be worried here. So, so I mean, this is the thing. So normally you get a, a grubby black dip stick, and, and then we are golden oil, as, as it as it were new, because there's plenty. There's no sort of particular in it. And I'm, I'm sure you all know enough that when you've got a diesel uh, diesel engine, you, even it's, when it's, it's straight black, after a change, black it's black. From brand it? new, yeah. Straight after straight after a change, it's yeah. black. Yeah. So you got the first carbon-free dipstick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of carbon in the steel. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Is this one of one? Is this what, what the, the, the engine? No, the unit, the actual. Is there another one? Is what he's yeah, saying? No, there are other ones. There are other ones? Yeah, there are. Yeah. But well, this is what we're showing you today. No, I mean, like, but. Yes. So there's other backhoes with hydrogen engines yeah, knocking around. Be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're on an I've engineering seen, I've seen in recent pictures, we've got a telescopic <coughs> handler as well up here, is it? No, no doubt. No. Yeah, we've got a telescopic handler as well, which is, depending on which customers are, are excited by. So. I got you. Mm. The beauty of this though is, as Bob said, it's, you, know, you can take the existing engine out and drop this engine in. It's the same chassis, same cooling pack, same motor arms, same bonnet. Yeah, yeah, so, so we, 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 we talked about the, this is where the diesel tank normally sits. And, uh, you know, there's, there's hydrogen packaged here in, in, in vessels. You see the tanks in there? Down the side of the machine. Oh, yeah. See the tanks? These are the 350 bar. And the refueling receptacle. I've got receptacle. a cutaway to show you the tank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, a common refueling receptacle, just, just like we saw on the 20 ton. And having got a refueler these days, we're in the in the fortunate condition, we can even refuel our Toyota Mirai, which until we got this, we, we couldn't. We used to take it to Sheffield to refuel. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, really. That's not very efficient, is yeah. it? No. Yeah. So that, that's you know, the, the, there's, some, there's some fuel here, and then there's another cylinder at the rearward to the rear axle. They're composites, are they? Isn't yes, they are. Yeah, they're, they're, these are tight threes. Is there any sort of stats on what you can drop on this before it breaks? Like a, there is because they certify it to R79 and therefore I'd look in the standard, but they're, they're a certified automotive certified standard cylinder. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what you're saying. They have, have, have piercing tests. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm sure it's. I mean, the good, the good thing is, and a lot of the learning from Toyota, you know, their, their methodical approach to doing tanks and things is, is actually great for the industry. It really really prepares the future well, doesn't it, Bob, for yeah. standards and testing. Yeah. Can you track any of that through from what Toyota's has done with it? Mm. So, hydrogen, you know, the, the, the benefit is that you can take the field to the machine. 
this is a refuel. I'll talk about that in a moment. But we have a flat, flat. You know, a, a, sorry, an Arctic truck. This 12 meter trailer. This thing was some of 90 kilograms on board. This and the hydrogen truck backs up and decants into the refuel unit. Okay, that's that's the practice on this site. I think other sites, depending on their aquarium like this or their house built site or whatever, will have different refueling practices and logistics practices. This jobby, it's a 24 foot <coughs> container that's been converted. Within it is uh, 24 kilograms stored hydrogen at high pressure. It's 450 bar storage pressure, such that when you plug in the refueler unit, it'll decant comfortably in, in, into here. So. What they're also in here is, is a booster pump because it's got to continuously charge up to that 450 bar. I don't think this is necessarily the um, most elegant solution for many sites. And in fact, even on this site, we, we consider the fuel today gets moved around in a bowser. You know, just a, it's a trail trail unit that usually goes behind a, you know a fast track or something. We take the fuel to the machine and actually that that solution is appropriate with the We take the mobile hydrogen to where the machine's working. But for all that, we can show here the straight, how straightforward a job it is to refuel. Mark, you want to yeah, do that? We'll you come all the way, you can all see. <laughs> how long, Bob? So, uh, or a matter of minutes, you know, certain, you know, five to ten minutes, depending on how much hydrogen is in in the machine when it, when it returns to base for refueling. And there's a purge line, so what, one's, one's hydrogen feed and the other is, is, is purged to a tension. Yeah. And you know, so that's fume recovery. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, there's no risk of spillage, so there is some elegance to this really compared with say a, you know, a, a diesel bowser, which, which is great and convenient, but you know, typically you throw the hose into the top of the machine and switch the pump on and if there's any overspill or whatever, there's no spillage here.